Is that good enough for Princess Stephanie? Good. Oh, yeah, I'm recording. All right. So whenever something is thrown or launched in a problem, then that is a projectile. And there's certain rules that we're going to follow when it's... All right. I can't see the paper now. Lights back on. No, I wouldn't So whenever you have a projectile, there's certain rules that we have to follow. And there's three different types of problems that are going to pop up when you are dealing with projectiles. The very first thing that we need to do is we need to assume that our acceleration due to gravity is about 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, the second thing, our acceleration in the x equals zero if and only if uh, there is no air resistance. I'm sorry? If is zero. If and only if. Um, and we're going to assume there is no air resistance unless the problem actually tells us there is air resistance. Those are the two main assumptions that we're going to deal with. All right, so problem type number one. This is what we did in class where we had a cannon and we launched a projectile with an angle of zero. So that is where our theta equaled zero. This is what we call a horizontally launched, horizontally launched projectile. If we're dealing with a horizontally launched projectile, we have some tips to follow. Um, first tip is that all of your initial velocity is on the x-axis. So your x component is your initial velocity. So all of the initial velocity is v sub naught x. And that's because when you do v naught sine theta, where theta is zero, you just get zero. So all of that doesn't matter. So all of your velocity in the x is equal to that. And that's all you got to remember for those types of problems. Relatively simple type of problem. We hope to get this one. Uh, whenever you're dealing with your horizontal displacement, another name for this is range. range. Problem type number two. That is probably the most common one. This is your launched at an angle from some height and it returns to some height. So think about two people playing catch with a baseball or a football. You're throwing it at some height with an angle relative to the horizon and then it's getting caught at that same height. So tip number one is we're going to assume that the starting height and ending height are the same or zero yeah I would just put my zero at my starting height and make my zero uh, the ending height so we'll just put that tip number two what shape does that trajectory make parabola. good so if it's a parabola then we have parabolic symmetry And what that tells us is we can cut this parabola in half and everything on this first part of our parabola is equal but opposite to the second part of our parabola. Yeah, I can't connect the dots so well. Okay, so all the stuff in the beginning equals all the stuff in the end. An example of that is if our initial velocity, 
launched is 10 meters per second. Guess what our final velocity just before it hits the ground will be? No, not 10 meters per second. It will be equal but opposite. It's going down now, right? So now it's going to be 10 meters per second. It's a parabola. So at the very top, what's happening uh, in terms of our, vo our y velocity? That's right. Our final y velocity at the very top equals zero right there because it stops and then it changes direction. So just remember that when you're considering your velocity vectors. Again, no air resistance, so my velocity in the x will stay the same throughout the whole entire trajectory. Meanwhile, there is no downward y velocity and it's going to slowly increase because of the acceleration due to gravity happening in the downward direction. And then over here, it's the opposite. What's that? Question? No? Good. If we have parabolic symmetry and we cut our parabola in half, that means we have now cut our range in half and we've cut our elapsed time in half. All right, so if we start here and we go here, that means our final velocity in the y is zero, our t2 equals half of t1, and then this delta x is half of the total x. That's number two. Uh, one last thing for launched at some height and it ends at some height. If there's no air resistance, it'll be that line right there. Oh no, can you see that or no? Okay, I'll try to make this a little bit darker. If there is air resistance, then you're just not going to get as much. Air is going to slow down in the x direction. So you're gonna end up with a trajectory like this, rather than that big long one. No air resistance is an ideal situation and with air resistance, it's going to stunt everything. And we'll look at that with the fit. Ooh. Wait. No. No. There we go. Problem type number three. Perhaps the trickiest. Uh, this is where you're standing on top of a building and you throw something and it lands some distance uh, below. For this type of a problem, our tips... Obviously, there's not parabolic symmetry, right? So you can handle this by, like, cutting it off right there and then saying, okay, it's going to return to the same height and then figuring out the time here and then add it to the time down here, if you like, that kind of takes a while. So if we are looking for time, you have to use your quadratic formula. Hold on, hold on, you're gonna get a chance to, to sing. Go ahead, s sing away. Hold on, B squared or C squared? B? Yes. Minus 4 AC is over 2. All over 2. <laughs> so there's that. So to find whatever X is, we need to have an A term, a B term, and a C term. What form is that called? Temple. Nope. Temple. The equation that we're going to use the standard form. No? It's called the standard form. No, that's where you have um, zero equals 
AX squared plus BX plus C. Oh, yeah, it what do you call it? Power, powers of descent. Standard form, right, yeah, standard form. Do we have an equation that looks like it's in standard form? Yeah. Which one? It's almost in standard form. Almost. Almost. What do we have to do? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to set it equal to 0, right? So if I subtract x from over here, then I have x naught minus x final. And I don't know what that is. It sounds confusing. So it's not displacement. Because remember, displacement is delta x. And that is final minus initial, not initial minus final. So I'm going to do two bits of subtraction here. I'm going to first subtract my x naught, so that way I have a final minus my initial. And this becomes delta x equals v naught x times t plus 1 half a t squared. Now I'm going to subtract out that delta x from each side. And I'm going to get 0 equals v naught x times t plus 1 half a t squared minus delta x. And if we arrange it into uh, descending powers, that will allow us to easily see our a term and B term and C term. So we've got A, B, and C. And our quadratic formula becomes T equals negative B plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 a Not t. Our t is, is, is now the x in the standard form. Yep. Can we put the other stuff in? Yeah, 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 and then you would plug in your numbers. So this is your a term, this is your b term, and this is your c term. Don't forget that negative. Um, also, don't forget negative is down. So if you're getting, like, no root found, then you probably missed a negative somewhere else. Two more little general tips for projectiles. Our velocity in the x is the magnitude cosine theta. Our velocity in the y is the magnitude sine theta. Remember cosine. Cosine on the x, sine on the y. A lot of this section is a practice in substituting equations for variables. And we'll see that when we deal with the first problem. So that's it for what I have to say.